Welcome. This is the seventh in my series of three-minute climate myth busters, and the myth we're going to bust today is that the climate models are worthless. We often see plots like this that prove that the models are don't agree with the data. The red curve here is the average of many climate model runs, and below we have some points that show data. And now you can see that the data diverges away from the models fairly rapidly, and if that were true, it would be a problem, but it isn't. First of all, we're comparing apples and oranges. The red curve is surface temperatures on the Earth, and the data points below are from high altitude measurements, and so are completely different quantity from what the red curve is representing. Secondly, the data sets below are averages of many, multiple data sets, and some of those data sets show much better agreement with the models than others. In fact, they've excluded some of the ones that show the best agreement. The data should have uncertainties on it based on the fact that it's an average, and those uncertainties should be fairly large. They also haven't shown the uncertainties on the models, and if the uncertainties on the data overlap with the uncertainties on the model, then the models are consistent with the data. The red curve is not properly aligned with the data. It's been shifted in both X and Y to accentuate the difference between the data and the models. So overall, this plot is a deception. Perhaps it's important to understand how climate models work and what they can do, and perhaps just as importantly, what they can't do. Climate models start with data. These are gathered from multiple global sources. Those are fed into a supercomputer through various climate equations that represent the different processes that are associated with climate. The output of that process is a climate model, which is then published in a peer-reviewed scientific journal. So how do you verify that you have the right physics in the models? Well, one way of doing this is hindcasting, which is where you take the historical record of various parameters that affect climate, feed those into the models, and see whether they reproduce the observed temperatures that you got throughout that period. They take parameters like the air composition of the atmosphere, the El Niño-La Niña cycles, volcanic eruptions, solar activity, and the Earth's albedo, and of course a lot, lot more factors. When you do that, you get something like this. The gray here is the output of many different models. The black line here is the average of those. And you can see when you compare it with the data, which is shown in red here, that there's very, very good agreement. That basically says the models have the physics right. So what are the issues when you turn hindcasting into forecasting? Well, many of the inputs that you've had data for for hindcasting, you now have to assume what will happen in the future. For example, the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, will they accelerate, will they stay about the same, or will they decelerate? When and how long and how big are going to be the future El Nino and La Nina cycles? Volcanic eruptions are random. They can't be forecast, they fall in a very wide range. Solar activity, is the next cycle going to be smaller, about the same, or larger? Nobody knows. And the Earth's albedo, the amount of ice and snow cover across the planet, is that going to continue to fall? Will it level off? Or will it start to recover? Again, nobody knows. So how do the climate modelers deal with all these different possibilities? Well, they run different scenarios. And we had five factors. If we run just 10 scenarios for each one of those uh, factors, then we'd have to run 100,000 climate scenarios to be cover all the possibilities. And the longer the forecast into the future, the wider the range of parameters, so more scenarios are needed. And perhaps only one of them will represent what the future holds. And you don't know which one. So what they do is they do what they call an ensemble forecast, which is this. You take the average of all of those models under different scenario bases and find out what the most likely temperature increase is going to be. And according to the IPCC, that's about 3 degrees centigrade with an uncertainty of about plus or minus 1. We can conclude from all of this that the models are just fine. Hindcasting proves that the climate models are good. They've got all the right physics in them. Forecasting requires many different assumptions about factors that cannot be known, and that's why we have to run so many different model scenarios, and only a few can get it right. But all the models show that if we continue to pollute our atmosphere with greenhouse gases, global temperatures will continue to rise. So if you see somebody using the argument that climate models are inadequate, please post a link to this video and tell them they're full of nonsense. Until next time, goodbye.